The best player for FC right now in the world is... Hello and welcome to EAFC Full Chemistry. This is the only podcast that breaks down all the action from the FC Pro Leagues. And this week, we've got a bumper episode to round off the leagues because we're going to be talking about La Liga FC Pro's Grand Finals and also the Uber Eats League Un Finale. Finale, I don't believe is French, but Un is. So I think I did okay. That was all right. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, bienvenue. Uh, Richard Buckley, fresh from France, Mr. from Paris. Mr. Buckley, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thank you. How Thank are you, you my friendly. friend? Looking very dapper. Uh, I'll be honest, should I take you behind the curtain? I've been away for all of the leagues, it feels like, and right. this is the only thing that's left clean in my suitcase. The three brown items that you own. Correct. That is a really, really tough problem to have. So what you mean to tell us is you've been traveling to places that are really sunny, you've got to see really cool stuff, Yeah. and unfortunately, Mr. Buckley's only got that. It's a nice jacket, that. It is. This is the FC Pro <laughs> jacket, can I just say. It does the, get a the lot The double wear. pocket, the collar, mm -hmm. the zip. All of the boys who work on FC Pro own this jacket in some kind of shade. I feel like you should have a shared wardrobe mm -hmm. and you all get to like share the jacket round like a film called Sisterhood of the Travelling Pants. There's nothing wrong with a jacket. It's iconic. It is iconic. It's just that on FC Pro Open, there were so many of you that at one <laughs> week or two wore that jacket, but in black with a white T-shirt. Take it with well, Melo. We're going, on, problem. We're, gonna go <laughs> on a, we're going to go on a bit of a tangent here for a second, but we did have quite a few conversations <laughs> when we were walking into the makeup room and whatever, the, the dress room going, you wear that jacket today, Buckley? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to wear it. Well, mine's similar. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. <laughs> but given that you have been to so many of the pro leagues, there have been little uh, opening ceremonies, musical performances. There was even an award ceremony at Uber Eats E-League on this past weekend. So tell me, uh, what was your favourite, most iconic opening or or even closing ceremony moment? Oh, I'll be honest. Th I've got... I've got two. I liked the award ceremony in Paris where I was over the weekend because it felt regal and it felt quite right. It felt like a, a real culmination of a really long season for those French players. And my second was at the virtual Bundesliga when we were having entrance music for the players. <laughs> yeah. That is, I mean, we're taking the shot all the way from backstage. We're following them down a gantry through a curtain it felt like something out of a film and it felt right for a grand final so award ceremony plus entrances and then maybe some music in there as well you've been involved in a lot of ea broadcasts right this year we've leveled up we have when you see stuff like that how excited does that get you towards the future events which we're going to talk about later on in the podcast anyway i think it gets me excited for the future it also gets me excited in the present because i'm there commentating it and i'm like wow this feels big like this feels massive like i'm seeing slow-mo pyro shots going off i'm seeing fireworks and uh sprinklers going off before we've even kicked off like it, it really does heighten the mood in every way possible. Gets the dopamine up, right? When you it see does. the fireworks and stuff. Shout out to the production guys as well because yeah. they do an amazing job as yeah. well. Yeah, E-Premier League had the slow motion camera for the finals, but I have to say, in Paris, every single time someone scored a goal, the pyrotechnics yeah. went up. Every the reason time, where yeah. it missed the target, it hit the side netting and the pyro went off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the person controlling yeah. it, right? <laughs> someone was like, we got this much gas and there weren't that many goals scored in the first couple of games. So yeah. I imagine they were like, we've got to use this up, lads. Come on. It's like the ghost goal app. Send Sterling it off, send it the, off, um, send it off. <laughs> at the World Cup, the ghost yeah. goal where everyone cheered, yeah. We nice. got an Argentinian rapper at La Liga, which was pretty cool. Lit Killer. You're already a big fan of his music, Richard Buckley. Let's go on, sing us some. I can't, unfortunately. It's only for Lit Killer. I, I know that he does 10.8 million monthly listens on yeah. Spotify. Um, so he is, he's big time. I asked Nicholas backstage, I went, is this guy famous? Because I'll be honest, I'd never heard of him before. Not been to Barnsley. Uh, he's not come to Yorkshire yet. <laughs> uh, maybe he's going to do a show at Don Costa Dome. We'll have to wait and see. But Nicholas was like, yeah, this guy's massive. I'm like, oh, I've never heard of him. He was like, well, you wouldn't. He's not your style of music. I'm like, oh, 
okay, Nicholas, I see how it is. Do you like him? No, not really. <laughs> I was about to say it's not Nicholas's style of music. I'm not allowed to tell you what is, but you, you um, know I know so- what he listens to when he's playing. You know when someone's got the look of like, you know, we can see it on the screen now. What a guy. Can I also say all production said that he was really lovely to work with. He turned up to his rehearsal the night before, which not all of the big stars do. And he was just, he was properly game to do a big old set for everyone. I also reckon he's an absolute menace on FC. I was just about to say that. I feel like he's got game. Yeah, I feel like he bought into it because when people ask you to do stuff with FC, everyone just thinks about the game straight away, right? Uh, To quote Nicholas, takes a lot of cojones to wear a white hoodie like that. Especially when it was quite chilly. As well, in Barcelona. Freezing by the end of that. I had to go out and buy a jacket. Wait, it was cold? It was. Yeah, by the time we got to the evening, yeah. It's really cold. we started at 2pm when we finished at quarter to 11. Sunny in the day? Um, On the pitch, yes. (laughs) We were not allowed to set foot on the pitch at the uh, Stagefront Stadium, which is where RCD Espanol play. They're a uh, La Ligue second division team. It was the most beautiful grass I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. It was outrageous how much like care they take of it these groundsmen and grounds people they're, they're crazy they look after the the pitches like me and Brandon did debate stepping on and, yeah um, good luck it, it was sort of it was about quarter to seven the games are underway I had a little break I thought you know what let me just see if I can let me see what it would be like to take a corner so I stood behind the corner flag I looked at it and I just heard a shout in Spanish from my groundsman it was just like hey I was like yeah I'm not going on the pitch don't worry that's also, me done during the day as well during the rehearsal day I was basically quite mumsy with the two of you and was just like do not stand on that grass do not because we'll all get fined I would have got on the grass to be honest um, but I'm pretty disappointed you didn't to be honest with you mate Nicholas you're on the grass I'm on the grass (laughs) yeah (laughs) should we actually talk about the players that came to uh, La Liga FC Pro because there were some big names in there I mean I say there were some big names I think in the tournament as a whole when you look at the La Liga FC Pro you've got the winner in Nicholas, who is one of the biggest names in the scene. I think a little bit of English bias. Ethan Higgins, uh, a great player. I agree, yeah. With I think he's footways. a massive name, yeah. Um, he went into that tournament, and I remember speaking to a few people around Footways as well and, and Sporting Gijon before they played, and there was an air of confidence. They mm-hmm. thought they, they might do well. A lot of these names that we're saying aren't even Spanish players. Like, that's the appeal of that league as well, because everyone wants to be in it. They know the prize money is bigger than most of the other leagues. They know that the, the opportunity that these Spanish clubs give teams as well is huge, and... I think when you look at it as a whole, it is becoming a very multicultural league. You're seeing a lot of different nations. And I mean, if you look at the top four, two of the four aren't Spanish. Yeah. In Nicolas and uh, Fernandez, Di Fernandez from Portugal. Are you surprised that Di Fernandez got to the top four again? I know he got to the top four back at the cup in San Sebastian a few weeks ago. But definitely, as far as the top four goes, he was probably the biggest outlier for me. Yeah, I think you were the weakest of the four players. Um, I think it is very much a case of who you play and when you play them in the tournament. And when you look at the groups as well, it, it, it's that old age saying, it's knockout, knockout FC. Who didn't make it through that you expected to, to go through then into that final four? Because when you look at that four, that's a four that you think... It's a four that you expected yeah. given the Cup's performances because they mm-hmm. were the best players in the Cup. Surely too good though, based too on the good. way he started off His the day. His first win were really yeah, impressive. Yeah, he started really well. I think, he scored, I think he won 7-2, if memory serves me correct. I would probably Tuga's say Tuga or Ethan. Tuga's a huge name. I mean, Ethan's the one yeah. for me. I think the work that Footwiz do as well, I think that goes under the radar. Footwiz, Footwiz, the Footwiz guys work really hard. Ethan's, he's proven himself before. He's done really well, especially in England as well. And yeah, like I was a bit shocked to see he didn't make the, the four, but I think the four were value for money. I think when you look at them, like you said, based on the previous cups, they were the four that you'd choose. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The biggest discovery for me was Nacho. This is, I think this is a running theme with me though, since the cup. I just am obsessed with the way that Nacho scores goals. I just think that every goal that he scores is just so unique. This was oh absolutely my. insane. I mean, the goalkeeper's You've got to ask questions. There. I mean, G- Gazaniga's the keeper in that yeah. one, right? Like, if Flappy I'm, hands. If I'm, it's popping on wrists. Like, <laughs> real, realistically, it's popping on wrists. Because if I'm playing FC and my goalkeeper does that, Quick sold. Should we explain what that was, though, for audio listeners? Because not everyone's watching this on YouTube. Yeah, it was, it was a Travella, but it wasn't just any Travella. It was a Travella from at 
absolutely miles out. It takes a lot with a ball roll before it. It takes a lot to take that shot on. But when you've got that space, Buckley, and you're, you're with that type of player, which is Ronaldinho, you've got to take it, right? And it's also bounced off the post, off the keeper's head, off the post, off the keeper's head, into the back of the net. Yeah. Well, so, we missed that bit out, and that's Gazzaniga where the problem is. is an SBC solution. I mean, it's a weird choice, that goalkeeper choice, isn't it? I mean, it was. It, I mean, it makes sense based on... Well, the squad restrictions the were three, restrictions. three players per club. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to use Courtois, it meant that you couldn't use... Modric and Cruz and Edemila Tau or Jude Bellingham, Bellingham Team yeah. of the Year Jude's a guarantee if you're going to use Courtois as well then you've got to pick between Cruz, Modric um, Rudiger it becomes a, a pretty tough choice then some people are using Vinny Junior as well I mean I mean, for me I'm picking a goalkeeper because goalkeepers for me when I'm playing FC is the thing that I overanalyzed the most. But that's exactly what Nicholas FC did. So he was one of the only players who did not go for that team of the season live by Modric, yeah. which obviously will cost a huge chunk of the budget. However, as part of the squad restrictions, your most expensive team of the season live item was free. free yeah. So most people are picking Modric, even if they're starting with, say, De Jong and they're putting Modric on the bench, but not Nicholas. Nicholas did take Marina because he had to put someone in, even though that's only 26,000 coins. Mm -hmm. And he kept Courtois. And I think he was the only player... Maybe Yago did as well. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it paid off for him. I think the goalkeeper is so important. I think the biggest thing about the the entire tournament for me was you, you can come in as a favourite, but winning the tournament as a favourite is very hard to do. And everyone expected, and there was almost that sort of like realisation that, oh, Nicholas is here, but he's not played that well in the groups. He's not played unbelievably yeah. well. Like, I think he could have been knocked out by goal difference if a goal would have gone against him in the group standings. He then comes into the cup and plays well at a really dominant final. And then he came into this tournament in Barcelona and it was just the Nicholas of old. Like, yeah. he came in and as soon as he won that first knockout game, nobody got close to him. He was so dominant. And even when the games were, like, tight in terms of scoreline... He always looked to be in control and he always looked comfortable. Now, we will speak about, obviously, Nicholas's win and everything like that, but can we touch on Nacho and his set pieces? Because I'm watching him and I'm watching them set pieces and I am pleading for you to help me. This is what I need in my game. Look, we're seeing set pieces in general, right, in the game, and it's fine margins and it's getting him out of trouble and that's what you need in FC. And we've seen it with players who potentially don't adapt but this year, set pieces are massive. You, you've got two situations when we look at the, the Liga FC Pro. You had Neat, who played all his corners short. Yes. And every time on commentary, me and Ryan Pessoa, me and Gravison, me and Brandon, whoever it was, we said, you can tell he's not worked on corners because you don't play corners short. It's the keeper you've movement on though, it. isn't it? Like, it's the keeper, when, when you've got the flexibility, like you do in FC, to move your keeper wherever it can put But even on. offensively, he, didn't, he wasn't mm. taking the corner. And you can take the goalkeeper out of it if you take the corner quick enough and you can play a lock to the near post. He wasn't showing that offensively, so we were saying he's clearly not worked on this on the training ground. And then defensively, if you're not going to move that goalkeeper, you're letting yourself play at a disadvantage because yeah. you have to move the keeper to the near post. You've got to be aggressive, and I think what Nacho was, in all his set plays, in all his play in general, he was really aggressive. It's, it might be a surprise to some people that Nacho won that semi-final against Neat, but when you think about Neat's game, it's just not balanced enough at the moment because of the fact that he hasn't practiced those set pieces, but his defense is full of holes. Even though he's able to score so many goals and guarantee most of the time a comeback in that second half, he's just letting too many in yeah. to be able to play against the likes of Nacho or Nicholas. He's the ultimate confidence player. And I think if he's playing well and he was feeling confident in every game, you probably back him to, to win. I think he's probably the only player, if he played well in a grand final against Nicholas, that could have taken him down. He didn't play well against Nicholas in the grand final in the cup and what, 8-1 was it, I think, the grand, in, the, in the final in the cup. In this particular occasion, Nacho just played a better game. He he, he was a little bit better fine-tuned. He was a bit more well-rounded and Neat struggled to break him down. And as soon as Neat starts to second-guess himself, that's when you start to see those holes creeping in and it, it's a disappointment because I love seeing Neat play I think he's if you're just going to sit down and show someone FC he is one of the most entertaining players to watch but 
you've got to go back to the fundamentals sometimes and he just didn't have those fundamentals in play. The good thing about Nate though is he's about 20 years old. So he first won in 2020 uh, La Liga FC Pro when he was 16. So if he can actually go through what went wrong with the coach and actually drill it down and work on it in time for each Champions League, maybe yeah. we'll see more potential. But I, I wonder if his season's going to get cut after, well, it is going to get cut after ECL because he didn't make World Championships. But I think next year, hopefully, he's going to learn some hard lessons and he's going to come back and really dominate. It's definitely a lesson, 100%. Like, when we're on the, the subject of being young and having time in the game, on the other perspective, Nacho was about to retire. I was thinking about retiring when yeah, you Yeah, in January. Him. Yeah. I mean, that not it crazy how quickly things can change for these players? Gives you hope. It gives you. me hope, yeah. <laughs> that, hey, listen, I'll never give up. I will never retire. Yeah, you've only got a few years on Nacho. But Nacho, that was his fifth consecutive uh, top 16 yeah. at uh, La Liga FC Pro. It's the closest he's come to winning since 2021 when he was beaten by Neat. And I think for Nacho, hopefully it's going to be a confidence boost. But he was definitely not happy with how he played in that grand final against Nicholas. Maybe he just didn't have enough time to get his head into the game. Maybe it's just Nicholas is just the most intimidating prospect you can face. He, he'd already realised his dream. He'd yeah. made a world championship. Well, we saw the emotion, didn't we? Yeah, oh, I was crying before I did that interview. I was just like, get it together, Frankie. It's already... <laughs> <laughs> hands, hands on, on, like head on the table, just hands, hands over his face in in tears. Just that's how much it means because it's life changing. It is. It, it's a life changing opportunity. It's a life changing amount of money as well. If you go on to that World Championships and have a good performance, but I think the the big thing when you talk about Nacho and Nicholas in a grand final, one player his season um, isn't complete without winning a trophy, and one player season is a, a huge success just by making the World Championships. And I think that's the difference between a lot of players and the very best players. Nicholas, Tex, Umut. Um, I'd even throw someone like, I mean, uh, the recent champion, Fuma, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the mix. They aren't just happy with making finals. They want to win, and that's their only objective. And I think you saw Nicholas... In that grand final, just the mentality shift from him. He, he switched into another gear. Should we talk about Nicholas then and that just display of domination? I wonder if we can look at his match, his semi-final against Steve Fernandez, because I think this is a really great example of how intimidating Nicholas is to any of his opponents, especially an opponent like Di Fernandez, who doesn't have quite the same level of experience, has played on the world stage, but has never got as close to the cup and being the star that Nicholas is. And there's that man who scored so many goals throughout it. There wasn't many aerial plus options in La Liga, but Soloth, that <sighs> item, oh my gosh. I mean, if there's anyone listening or watching this podcast and you're struggling for coins on FC, Soloth's your man. He scores, he's good at, He's good on the ball as well, which is the interesting thing. He's an absolute menace. He, he, he's so tall, he's so physical, he's so strong. Aerial plus, he's got good offensive play styles as well on with the ball at his feet. And I don't think any of the defenders... Yes, you had a couple of aerial plus centre-backs, but no one is strong and physical in that space. Can I say I don't like running with Soloff on the ball? You don't like running with Soloff <laughs> no, on the ball? No! He just feels like, like me and the driving lessons I took and gave up on last year. Right. Do you know what that is, mate, Mr Buckley? You know what we call that in the FC community? Skill, a skill issue. issue. That's what it is. Because Soloff, ultimate birthday, is one of the best items we've had this year. 22K. You can still use him. You can is still he 22K with him. now? He used to be 26. How is he going down? She's losing coins as well, you see. <laughs> She's losing coins as well. I swear well. that is um, not why I'm talking about him having all the grace and decorum of a reversing I dump truck. But. I feel like, I mean, this is a nice point to touch on the play styles this year in FC because I was a bit like, ooh, there's a lot to take in when they first came out. Now they make sense. Aerial Plus this year has been life-changing. Whipped pass. You know what else is a big one? First touch. First touch is massive because you can drill the ball in. You know, I'm thinking about that Julian Alvarez drilling uh, into him and then just dictate. I'll Ooh. be honest, you can you can take this as you want. There's there's probably five play styles that are just better than the Intercept. rest. Intercept. I think aerial plus. Correct. Longer is this plus? an order, yeah? Just five. Just just no right, order, okay. just five. Aerial plus, he's gonna say whip pass. Long ball pass yeah. is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. For me, anticipate. Ooh, I you like need that in the aerial plus as well. Is a defensive play style. Yeah. What about intercept though? For, for intercept, I, I think bit intercept is hit like, and miss. I don't know. You know, I saw Rykard with that intercept. Finesse plus. shot plus, of course. 
is just game changing. Which we'll talk about, I guess, in a moment Absolutely. when we move to Paris. Yeah. Yep. And I'm going to round it out with quick step. That's uh. that speed boost out the back of a step over is unbelievable. Mate, I, it's okay. There is a skill issue. And once you no, no, once no, you no, develop, no, no, no. I, I, I understand. understand. I understand where you're coming from, but there are some that you've missed out there. Like what? Power header? I think the bruiser one's important. The bruiser, as well, mate. Me. Bruiser's important because you want to get right into your opponent, right? Nice early doors. I'm thinking Millie Bright. It's not Sunday League. Here it is. You win the first tackle in, uh, in, in, in champs. First contact's yours. First contact's yours. The Bruiser one's important. Obviously, Aerial Plus, I completely agree yeah. with. Finesse, I can't argue with. There was a point long where Trevella was good. Long ball pass is naughty. Long ball pass. What about whipped pass? Oh, long ball pass because is so much better. Whipped pass is such a good one. Whip yeah, pass is so good. And I'm it's so pretty perfect. sure the team of the season live, Marino's got both. I think he's got the long ball and the whip. I don't think he's got he's got whip play star plus, but he's he's only 26k as well. So if you're looking for finesse. another naughty pick. What about Tiki Taka? Oh. No. No? Maybe earlier in the season. Nah, no, listen, you don't like Soloth, so I mean. <laughs> Well, Solov can't tiki taka, can he? I mean, look. He doesn't look. feel like he can. <laughs> he can tiki taka. <laughs> I, I actually think, I'm, I mean, as soon as I started using that Julian Alvarez team this season, we'll come to that at the end of the episode properly. Um, that first touch thing is quite important because, you know, in tight spaces, you can drill the ball at your player, he'll control it, and then take it. Ping pass is Ping pass is unbelievable yeah, as well. It's very, oh my God, play styles have been so good in FC, you know? Yeah. I'm a massive fan of it because I'm not just looking at items as they're item numbers on the on the item, etc. straight away. I'm not doing that. I'm looking at Joy, everything uh, they've got to it. I love it. Joint also allows you to do, and pardon the pun, it allows you to play a play style. Because if you so, want to get the ball out wide and just whip crosses in... Should we move on, Frank? Anyway, we, we, we did ask for Brandon Smith. <laughs> but he was busy, Speaking apparently. of someone who asked for Brandon <laughs> Smith, we've got something to tell you. There was a type... There was actually a person who said that Brandon was his favourite commentator. Okay. Do you want to grass him up or should I? I'll let I'm you I'm going to let you do it no, and no, no, then I'm going to give a bit it. more context to this. Um, let me just ask first, right, first things first. Do is, you, that, is that the door? Do, do, do you, you know there? who said that? I know you tell know me. who said that. I tell know me. you know who said tell it. Tell me, tell me. Do you know or not? No, tell me. Oh, it was Nicholas. He said that Brandon's his favourite. Well, at the, at the Bundesliga, <laughs> I had to sit down... <laughs> And as he was leaving, mm -hmm. Anders said, Ryan, you look the best, but Richard, you're the best commentator. So I've got Anders on my side. You can have Nicholas, 2v2. Me and Anders versus Brandon and Nicholas. This is the challenge to you yeah, right now. This, no, is, this is quite awkward. Let's have it. Okay, in, so in what fairness. actually happened okay. is this was when the boys were walking over for us to end the show and I'm on stage with Nicholas and I'm just like... I've already said to Nicholas before we do the interview, by the way, like you're Brandon's favourite. So maybe I can ask you who your favourite commentator is. Because I said, who is your favourite commentator? He said, Gravison, because he's Spanish. Oh, well, that's <laughs> so got not a even minute. Brandon. So you're <laughs> Let me do the interview and it came out as Brandon. Right. So it wasn't Brandon. He it was Gravison. Brandon but then you because he was trying it. to be nice to one of his biggest fans. And then he tried saying Ryan and said Richard. <laughs> So right. to be fair, he might not even like Brandon. He was just no, trying it's impossible to give not. fan service. Still there. Me and Anders versus Brandon and no, Nico. No, the thing is, but that's Let's unfair. If I, if I play with Nico, maybe you win, because I'm better than Brandon, and Brandon's not the best. Like, yeah, I've but... seen Brandon play FC, he can't play it. I mean, he's, a, he's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, no, no, Buckley, you know that as well. You know I'd cook him, right? The challenge is there. You know I'd beat Brandon, I'd though, right? Who's better than me or Brandon? I've put the challenge out. Answer the question, who's like, better than me or Brandon? Frankie, what's the next topic? Who's better than me or Brandon? What's the next topic? Sarek, Gasson, parce que c'est le froid à parler avec moi en Véron Uber Eats Ligon. Yeah, bonjour. Um, let's move on. Uh, je ne comprends pas en France. Did you just say con con pas? Yeah. Did you mean to say comprendre? No, I meant what I said. Do you speak French? Je parle un peu. Oh, right, yeah, she does. Right, okay, let's move on then, shall we? To, um, <laughs> okay. to France. <laughs> Hello, let's just talk about it. Uh, so you've mentioned that there was an award ceremony. What did you wear for the award ceremony at Uber Eats Legan? Uh, I wore a burgundy turtleneck and grey trousers. Lovely. Did you have nice shoes on at least? No, I had uh, <laughs> Nikes. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> He's a classy boy. <laughs> to be fair, you didn't know that there was a posh dress I code, didn't. but you were in Paris. Yes. You should have known. Um, 
Um, how do I phrase that? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Why don't you? Let's move on. Let's let's save face a little bit for you, and and tell us about the story of the league up to the point of the finals. Because we actually only got to see two teams in the finals: Olympic Lyonnais and FC Lorient. So yeah. So the reason that we those two teams only had to be one game as well in the semi-finals was because they finished first and second in the group. Um, it was Olympic Lyon on twenty five points. Nine wins, three losses, and it was Lorient who finished on 23 points in second. They went into the semi finals where they both individually won their games 4 1. The story of this is in the groups, you play a best of three. In the quarter finals, you play a best of five. And then in the semi finals onwards, you play a best of seven. So as they got to the semi finals and started to progress into the tournament, all the games that they were played were best of seven. We Got there on the day, and the four players who were there, Kurt Dilo, Lex for Olympic Lyon, and then over for FC Lorient were Fuma and the Italian Montaxa, who didn't go down very well in a very partisan Paris. It's just French people, isn't it? It's French diff. There's a lot of French people in Paris, believe it or not. How did he react to that? Um, well, he didn't, he didn't really do much, to be honest. He just had his headset on. Mm. Yeah, um, I probably didn't hear it all. He kept turning around to Fuma going and I, fist bumping. I absolutely love that. I yeah. think the passion in Paris shown was sensational. It's Paris esports fans. I did I realize. I love the French, mate. The chant that French fans do in esports is just transferable. They go la 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 and then try and fit in the name of the team or the player they're supporting. They, they were also, at one point, I think, chanting uh, Elélie France when Montaxa was playing. Nice. Yeah, this is the passion we want. Make sure that I hope they come to all of the events. Travel to the UK for <laughs> went, and shout at people who aren't friends. This they went to a penalty we shootout. Want, though, Have a look is... at this. Because this um oh. he lost the penalty shootout. Kurt Dowell gets up on his feet. Throughout the entire penalty shootout, whenever Montax would take a pen, he was getting booed out of the arena. I love that. Look at Ryan's face though. I don't know if we're gonna be able to show where it was paused. Ryan's just that was awkward. Yeah. <laughs> What a place you had. What a lovely little party. It was gorgeous. You look like you're at no, the opera. I'm, I'm a massive fan of esports. I think that esports events need fans. <laughs> yeah, they do. And that's what we need. So I'm a fan of it. Get me I'm in glad you're a fan get of me, esports, given that you're working in it. End. Yeah, get me in your way. <laughs> Breaking news, FG loves esports. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time, eh? <laughs> We're going to see you in other esports. Are you coming for my job in my other game? Listen, I'm telling you now, right? I will be with the French at some point <laughs> and I will be booing with them because that is the passion we need. Right? I will introduce you at some point to the Golden Hornets, who are the Vitality fan section. Right. I, they have let me wear their bee head as their mascot. I've Not signed their big drum that they so bring to events. You're a mascot for them. Well, temporarily, yes. But when I see them at events, <laughs> They're like, hey, funky, funky. <laughs> uh, honestly, I yeah. think they're class. They I cheer think, for me. It's I great. think they're class. They're <laughs> unbelievable. Speaking of class, there was a certain item that got used a lot um, this weekend. Thoughts on that uh, very, very tall showdown SBC? So the two the two SBC showdowns were, I think, Henrique, the yeah. left back, and Torre. Is but not that... to be confused with the IR. We're talking about Isaac here. Yes, yeah. for FC Lorient. He's a big, big boy. How tall? Six, six foot nine. nine. Six nine. That is crazy. Um, and FG, you're a big boy too. So you're obviously <laughs> kindred you, spirit I'm... with this man. I wouldn't say I'm six nine. <laughs> I mean, that's pushing it a little bit. But this man, I remember him from previous FC titles, but never used in events. But you're looking at stuff like, get him on the line for He's a free literally... kick. Did he just say Get him in the way. Yeah, he's <laughs> sensational. He's like, as tall as the goal. Oh. He just Vinnie Jones check. I don't think he even jumped on that. He one. did it. He just did a. Do you know when you jump into the pool and you do a pencil dive? He pencil dived off the floor. How important was he? How important did he? Oh, you're massive. Well, quite literally. You had, yeah. you had Colin Moani, who was the aerial plus player. Yeah. In the um, Illegan, and nobody crossed the ball because she couldn't get it past him. Like it, it was. Incredible his impact on the teams. Um, because he only came out, I think, on Saturday and he walked into every single team straight away. I mean, that is literally just a case of hype being a huge yeah. factor. Do you think we'll see him again later on in the year? Because look, I mean, I would you, imagine so. there's moments in this where we've spoke about previously on this podcast where there's various players in FC that's so hard to control, Erlen Haaland. Yeah, so could off. he compete? I mean, he's not got aerial plus, though, has he? He's not, but he don't need to jump. 
That's very true. He's as tall as the top of the cross. I think he's got Ariel Silver, if I'm oh, not mistaken, okay. um, as one of his play styles. 91 jumping. He has got aerial as well. He's got intercept, block, ping, pass, and then obviously his playstyle plus is and a power head and bruiser. And he's going to get plus two as well because Laurie ain't won the game. So mm -hmm. that's going to go up to a 91. He could be the best centre-back on the game. How Ooh. much is he? He was an SBC. I completed him. Right, that's interesting that you say he's the best centre-back in the game. I think could that's be. a stretch. Could be. Well, you're looking at like, imagine him and Team of the Season Van Dyke next to each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, Vaughan Virgil's just unfair, isn't he? And then you could, because a lot of the players who were playing in the, uh, well, the four players who were competing in the finals of the either and Uber Eats were also using Vieira at fullback. They're all using Vieira at fullback to sort of, if you did want to cross, he gives you that option at fullback as well. And then also Singo, who was a player that I, I'd not seen too much about. He was an SBC that got released, who was also incredible. Like he was so, so good. He got forward, he could defend. He was so fast. Like, he was a, a real, real key player in every team. Another play style that's important, I think, is relentless as well. Yeah. Because it allows the players to just never get tired. It's so important, especially going into the latter stages of games, etc. And it, it allows you to do things as well. If you've got enough relentless players in your squad, you can overload the ball side, you can do... I should remember, because I were only there a few like, hours ago. <laughs> I think five of the seven games went to extra time. Yeah. Over the course of it the best of seven. Yeah. And uh, three of them, was it three of them? Two of them went to pens. Two went to pens. Yeah. But the relentless, I think that's a really good point to raise. I mean, I'm taking it back to La Liga now, but when Nicholas was playing in that final, we were just almost trying to do the maths and going, how many of his midfielders have relentless because of the constant pressure that Nicholas is applying. We were just like, he can't maintain this if it goes to extra time. But obviously, it didn't because it's Nicholas. Yeah. So important, like relentless, so important. Like, what about game seven? Um, was there much <sighs> pressure going on in game seven? Because Fuma didn't want to play that, did he? No, I was struggling in game seven, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> it, you were going out of your mind in game I seven, was. shall we say. You and Ryan, I've never heard Ryan so high pitched. Was... And at one point, I thought you were broken because there were some hijinks in the goal and you just went, check, 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 check. <laughs> yeah, he's correct. Um, Game, the emotions best... were high, right? Explain oh. to everyone who's watching and listening what was going on. It was on in incredible. Game I enjoyed we, it so much. There was a there was a penalty given mm -hmm. in one of the games. I think it might have been game two, maybe game three, and it was Torre who fouled him. He saves the penalty, and then the corner gets played short. They whip it into the back post. It comes back across the box, and Zaya Emery has an open goal. He shoots. A keeper saves it and then Czech sort of like falls on the ball but doesn't clear it. And then me and Ryan just lose his minds. We're like, no, 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 no. Like the last thing I want to see is a, a bad goal to win, like to lose someone a game and sure. to lose someone, I mean, thousands of dollars, thousands of euros, world championship tickets. So I don't like seeing bad goals, but I've also got no other reaction just to shout and go, Czech, Czech. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it happened twice in the same game, to be honest. Petr Cech was on a madness. Do you think there was more pressure? This is, I'm, I'm really working this question over my head and I'm going to commit to it even though I know it sounds ridiculous. But do you think there was more pressure in the finals than in the first game? Because it almost felt like to me, in the first games, those players weren't even like taking shots. So the the vibe when I spoke to a lot of the, the other French commentators there, um... Vitality Brian, one of the best French players to ever play, he was there commentating. We spoke a little bit before the broadcast started and we said the first game of the best of seven decides who wins this because it's Fuma versus Lex, arguably the two yeah. better players in the two teams, no disrespect to Montaxer and Kurt Dilo, but given the season performances, they were the two better players. Fuma is he's like Michael Jordan in the playoffs. He doesn't lose. And when Fuma won that game, Everyone said, I think this is going to be a 4-0 or a 4-1. I think Lorient will really push on. And then what you started to see, every time Lorient got a point in front, Olympic Lyon instantly won that next game. Took us all the way to the game seven and we went to a break. When we got back from the break, Fuma, now I've, I've learned to know after speaking to Montaxa afterwards, Fuma said to Montaxa, you play the game seven. You, you you play this for us. I've got confidence in you and I believe in you to win this game for us. 
which is, to me, that was crazy because Fuma is the guy yeah, for in sure. the E League. And Why he's do you won think it he did that? Three in a row. Maybe he just realised that Montax was playing better in that moment and thought, you're going to do it. But then Lex played for Olympic Lyon as well and Kurt Adilo was the better player on the night out of the two. Do you think Fuma had more confidence in Montax's defence? Because... Let's face it, Lex, he is not shy in going forward most of the times. He looked a little bit shy in game one, but he was ag full on aggressive by the end of game seven to the point where actually he was making some risky defensive decisions. I wouldn't necessarily say defensively. I just think the general scope of play, you can tell when you're not fully on it. And I think Fuma wasn't on it. Like This is a guy who's who at this point, he's had three titles in a row. Yeah, which is it's he crazy is to say that like one of the he, best around and for him to The self realization is, though, to say, and you know what? I'm gonna put my ego to one side. I know that if we are gonna win this as a team, and my best chance to get into the world championships is by handing you the controller. I think that's that's unbelievable. Like that's it's really It is, it's remarkable because yeah. I don't know many people who've won three in a row who would then turn away and be like, no. It's like Tex saying in the grand final for City, we're gonna play a one off game and passing the controller to yeah, Bernano. Wouldn't happen. Because every player has so much self-confidence that I can do this on my team. For sure. And you, I think you saw it a little bit with Olympic Lyon because me and Ryan both said when we were commentating that best of seven, Kurt Adilo has been the better of those two players on the night. Lex was the season MVP. He was the best player in the season. That, For sure. Uh, over the course of, what, 12 matches, 15 matches, including the playoffs. But on the night in the theatre, I would have said if they could run it back, probably Kurt Adilo should have played. And the result might have been different. A fourth in a four in a row now for Fumo, placing the world championships. Just taking um, the mick, innit? Yeah, this man is incredible. He's absolutely sensational, isn't he? But is he a world champion? Well, I mean, <laughs> you have to put him in a conversation because he's a winner. And when you can win, I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we'll talk about the ECL first, shall we? Um, we know all about the, the competition now, don't we? So should we have a look at who's qualified? Sure. We talked about this in the last episode as well, but it's brilliant to actually have another look now that we have everyone in there. Names that standing out. Johnny, uh, I was about to say Levy, maybe not Levy as much as Umut, for example. So Johnny mm -hmm. and Umut from Virtual Bundesliga. I would say Nicholas from La Liga. I wonder if Nacho maybe will struggle on the international stage, although I really want to see him do well. All of the boys from Edivisi, so Emre Yilmaz, he's defending champion, yeah. Levy David, PhD in Manuel. I think that Lex, he is a clinical goal scorer, and I really want to see him have a breakout performance at E Champions League. I think he gets overshadowed by Fuma, but I think he could have a great time. I think Dilo as well was a revelation for me uh, in Paris, obviously Fuma. Tex, Matthias, and last week, listen, I was singing Marley's praises. Yeah, I, sure. I think Marley's is a dark horse for me. I don't know the partner league names, I'm not going to lie. Well, we have also got, that's what I was just about to say, we've also got the partner leagues, and and you know what, it, it's a little bit of a not quite sure what to expect with players like that, because they're not expected to do much, but the beauty of it is, is being there and putting yourself in the conversation. There is an opportunity for you to definitely do something. Yeah, send it down. Send, send it, it down. down. Send it down. I think you've also got <laughs> the... Um, uh, I'm not sure if this will be confirmed by the time it, it comes out, but you've got the three quarterfinalists in real life. Yeah, for sure. Who have taken sports. Andoni for Atletico, Encante for PSG, and Roy, and Roy Feldman, Feldman yeah. for Dortmund. All three of them are really good. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough for everyone from the, the so-called minor leagues, I think, to earn respect off the people who have qualified from the major leagues. But does that not work in their hands a little bit? Because stepping into an environment like that as the underdog, putting well, there's no pressure on you anyway if you if you don't do well. I mean I mean it look I mean when you're looking at it like that, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I think like, there's levels. I think there's gonna be levels in each group and then we're gonna to get to the quarters and that's when it'll start. I think we're gonna get a shock. I think there is going to be one of the players from the partner leagues that are gonna stand out and they're gonna make a name for themselves and it could be life changing for them. Who's your top four? Ooh, top point the whole thing. Yep. Um, I can't look past uh, Holland, to be fair. I what, think, all four no, players? not all four, <laughs> of course. Um, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to go Piet Zin. I'm going to go Manu. Yeah. I'm going to have to bat one of the City boys. I think Tex will get there. Um, and then I'm going to go with Umut. Really? Wow. 
You think that Umut's going to bounce back to you? I quick? think Umut always, always finds out. He'll find a way. I think he loves the stage like that. And didn't find a way to the World Championships. He though. didn't. And that's why there's so much riding on this. Because True. when you're not in the World Championships, it's all or nothing in this. And I just, think... I just look at the, I do look at Holland and I look at Emre and I look at Levy and I just, I can't look beyond a Dutch winner this year. I almost feel like Emery wants to win this more than World Championships. I, I do think, think he wants to do the double, do the back to back. I do have to back Manu, though. You I think just, Manu Bashaw wins it? I, don't, I think he'll be in the conversation. You asked me for my top four, right? Yeah. And I'm backing Manu. He's had a bit of a tough year. A tough, tough year, but I think he's going to bounce back. What Richard Buckley. Top, top four. four. I think the the knockout bracket is it, so hard to call because Manu could play... Levy round well, one yeah, in the knockout. It could be like that. Um, yeah. But I will give you Bonanno. Yeah. Hezus from Italy. Italy, yeah. Um, Levy David. Fuma. Oh, Fuma. My top four. You think Fuma will make it to the top four? I do. Do you think, though, that Hezus had that, like, what was it, 15-5 or something, grand final? I remember that was two legs, that wasn't yeah. just one. Do you think that he didn't have as tough competition, though, as he's going to have here at the Champions League? I just think he's a like he's a fantastic player. If memory serves me correct, he were a runner-up last year in the Champions League. He was, yes, um, true. So he, he's clearly got the ability, and I just think that the the opportunities that he possesses in the final third, I, I, I can see him outscoring every player mm. if it comes up against him. Frankie, who's your top four? Okay. This is really hard. This is tough, and that's the beauty it of the tournament that we've got ahead. And obviously, I think yeah. there's opportunities for you guys to witness it in Do we person. get a prize, whoever gets most out of the four? Yes. Between the three of us. We get more work in <laughs> SC Pro. <laughs> so right. the pressure is on, lads. Uh, I'm going to say... Oof. I'm trying. I'm. I. I don't want to choose both Matthias and Tex. I'm trying to choose one. <laughs> stop! Stop! No, I'm trying to saying, put me you, off. I'm just saying that there's there's a group of people like you're singing praises of in the last episode of Full Chemistry, and if you don't pick them, then I'm definitely saying Levy. I stand by Levy. No, no, I'm thinking like more e Premier League players that you were. Talking oh, Marley! About. Hang on a second. I said he was a dark horse. I didn't say he was going to win, but I did say he was a dark horse. We're just asking what you. Top I think Marley for quarterfinals, but I don't know if he's in my top four. Okay. But I do think either Tex or Matthias is. I yes, just haven't I decided which one. I'm going to go with Tex on that one. Okay, I'll go with Matthias. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Matthias, I'm going to say Levy. I'm not sure that Manuel's going to get to top four. I just, like, I, I just want it to. happen. I know you right? love Manu. I love Manu so much. I want it to happen, but it's going to be tough, of course. I'm going to say Nicholas. Um, Nicholas is. A and I'm going to say Johnny. I noticed you did not say Johnny, despite the fact that you think he's going to win World Championships. So, yeah, so I'm saying I'm locking in Johnny, Nicholas, Levy, and then. Oh, it's gosh, my heart. Now my head's saying text, not me. You know what? It's hard to look past Levy, you know. It actually is genuinely really, really difficult to look past Levy. I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah, I'm going in Matthias because he's won now four yeah, yeah, regional Matthew's leagues. A winner, so, yeah. Matty, Levy. Nicholas and Johnny. It's hard that I'm not saying PH in right now. I Just I think him. that Emre is going to get nervous. I think it means too much to him, and I think he's going to get nervous. I think Manu's got a bit of a. I think he's got a bit of a mental block. No, no, no. Manu's a winner. Manu doesn't have no mental block. I don't think he will when it comes to World Championships. Depending on how well he does at ECL, I think this is really important for him. I think he needs to get into the quarterfinals, and I'd love it if he got to at least the semifinals. But I just think that he's still feeling unlucky. He's got this feeling around him. He's openly spoken about it, even at age of his E. He feels unlucky this yeah, year. Yeah, he's had a lot of time in his head, though, and I think he'll bounce back. I hope he does anyway. Remember, you guys can come and watch the action in person. fcpro.com to come and witness the action live. How class is that? You know, you know what a funny story is, right? I went to an event in Fulham Broadway, an EA event, where Dasari won against Tex in the final. Shout out to Carl Walker for the tickets. That was when I wasn't even a streamer. And I've done it. So if I can do it, you guys should. It was class, mate. It was unbelievable. Is that when you asked me for a picture? I think it might have been, actually, yeah. <laughs> Were you there that day? 
Oh, come on, Titan. Cost more there. Yeah, All right there. I think he said no as well. Talking about like 2018. Oh, no, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> oh, my God. You must have been like a teenager. You're st- still in your student uh, days 20, back then. What, what this is it 2018, 20, surely? 19? I think it was 2019. Yeah, I remember I rang Kyle and I was like, mate, there's an event at Fulham Broadway. I'm at David Lloyd. Can I um, I'd have just come in? turned 21. Yeah, and I said, excuse me, mate, Mr. Richard Buckley, can I have a photo? And he went, no, not now, I'm busy. Not right now, but Brandon's over there. And then I got one with Brandon, that's why he's my favourite too. <laughs> so moving on to World Championships, obviously we've discussed a lot of the names who have made it, but then there's also some names from the partner leagues further afield than mm-hmm. Europe that we haven't discussed, so from E Libertadores, Nathan Essar and Guy Barros from the EMLS Cup, Portugal's Jafonso. <laughs> and K1 John, who was runner-up. Uh, and then, obviously, we've got spots from the partner leagues, including Mr. Mark 11, Mark last year's runner-up. Yeah. I am so chuffed to see him back. He's a great guy, and you know what? He's a great player as well. He had a lot to do, because he came from the loser's bracket. He did, indeed. In the, uh, in the Aussie League, but he, he's done well. He did what we expected of him. He's the favourite in that region, and it is hard to win back-to-back. That's what he's done. I think he'll really, really have a point to prove. I reckon he'll be over here in end of May boot camping because after the FC Pro Open, he I think he left quite de- deflated. Yeah, of course. Um, and quite disappointed in his performances. And I know everyone at Footways, Dan, Denman, Mark, they'll be really trying to get the every last drop out of a quality that he's got. Look, Footwiz, man. I say it enough. Them guys, the job they do goes so under the radar. Denman, Footwiz, Dan, everybody involved with them. Shout out to Footwiz. I think they're class. If we're looking at this lineup like we just were, who are you picking here um, as your top four? This is, this is I honestly... I know who you want to well, pick. Still, there's still players still There's still players still to arrive. Yeah, there's still players still to arrive, but where we're at right now... I think how many spots we've got left? Is it eight more eight spots? Left. Eight more spots we've got remaining, yeah, right? They're, they're playing spots. Yeah, so okay. So let's let's put playings aside. Okay, and you've got to pick your top four from this. Um, this is honestly incredible. I would love Anders to win it. Am I going first? I knew you, you were going to go say first. that. I would love Anders to win it. Just okay. so. He says this every single episode, even <sighs> when we're not talking about World Championships. Yeah, I'd love Anders to win I that. think... I actually think it's easier to pick than the E-Champions League. Mm-hmm. I think Anders... Yeah. I agree. I'm going to go Levy again. Yep. I'm going to go Nico. Okay. And I'm going to go... Are like, you thinking PH Sin's running out of momentum? You thinking, what? I'm going to go Tex. Yeah, Ooh. thank you I think very it's going much, to be a yeah. Tex-Anders semi-final. <laughs> we could see them two face off there. We could also see Tex face his teammate, Matty. Nicholas versus Matty. Vers- yep. Nicholas- oh, my God. Nicholas versus Matty as well. It is... This is... Obviously, already box office. Can I just speak on Abu Maka for a minute? What a player. What a player. Goes under the radar a lot. Um, had a really, really good start to the season. He's just a good player, isn't he? He's when he, like a second ice man in a way. When he yeah. domestic he's domestic league. Steel. Yeah, I think what he's doing right now, um, he's probably a big major title away from fully taking that mantle from Empress Tisari and moving yeah. forward. Um, he's still probably a little bit in his shadow. But if he plays well at this World Championships, he well and truly takes that mantle forward as the go-to guy from Saudi Arabia. And I really do think he... He also, I think that description there, the, a second nice man, he looks really composed and calm. Who do you think, in a hypothetical world, would win if it was Nicholas FC versus PHN? <sighs> That's a mad That's, question. If it's a final... Okay, if it's a grand final. Nicholas wins a grand final. If it's a quarter final, PH Zin beats him. Why? PH Zin, I think Nico in a grand final, he can't lose another grand final. If he gets to a grand final, he can't lose another one. Yeah, he, can't. he lost back in 2022 to about on penalties. Yes, on penalties, yeah. Why is it always coming down to penalties? So Manu beat Mark 11 on penalties yeah. as well last year. It's just a thing. It's going to be pens again this year. It, oh no, that that would be who who oh, I don't know, that would Anders loses on pens, I think. <sighs> I don't know. Anders I, I, I can see a world in which Anders wins. But he's got to win in regulation. No extra time, no pens. Who's the best player in the world? The best player for FC right now in the world is... <laughs> um, Anders. It's Anders. Still. It's Anders. So what's holding Anders back from winning something then? Well, we're going to see, aren't we? I mean, we're going to. I mean, I think what holds him back is the fact that he won't adapt to crossing the ball in. 
Yeah. Um, we had a big crossing, conversation about this last week with Ryan. I think Anders is going to cut. I think he's going to change things. I think we're going to see an Anders that's ready to adapt his game. He's got a lot of time to think about stuff. Nobody analyzes his game more than Anders. Anders will study every last kick on the virtual pitch. He is... I think that the last topic on this, the last thing I will say about the World Championships, I think that Tex has to have a good performance. I'm not talking getting knocked out in the groups. I'm talking if he's going to win it, this is the year that he wins it. What makes you say that? I think he's had numerous terrible world championships. He has, yeah. Where he's been grouped, he's been knocked out early, he's been a real disappointed performance. He had a lot of pressure on him with Man City this season. He had to win the E-Premier League. They won the E-Premier League. He had a disappointing performance in the Pro Open. This is his chance to put some of those other names to the side and for him to show that he is still, right now, in with PhD and Anders. And you know what? When you look at Nico. his second leg of Group D of the FC Pro Open, you saw what Tex is capable yeah. of and he so nearly made it through to that finals weekend. I mean, it was the a new... tenacity of yeah. Tex is something to behold. And I'm really hoping we've seen that develop even further from E Premier League. And I think that E Champions League is going to be the litmus test. You never back against Tex. In situations like this, you never back against him. You see, like we said, FC Pro for him, especially week one, wasn't the best. But I think it's a lot of changing factors. It was a new club, perhaps. Let's just all enjoy changed. it. Let's, Let's just, just enjoy yeah. it. Let's just sit back and enjoy it, shall we? Because it's going to be sensational. Given that we've only got a few more minutes left of the show, this is the point where I unleash FG to I'm talk ready about to the latest <laughs> team of the season updates because he never stops talking about it. And to be fair, oh. all the time that we spent in Barcelona doing uh, La Liga FC Pro, the boys had their phones open and they were just obsessing over the items. And I know it's been hard for you, Richard Buckley, being on the road for so long. You can finally crank up the PlayStation when you get home. What are you going to be looking for in them packs? Blues. <laughs> uh, Van Dyke, Haaland. Oh, Premier League team of the season. What a time to be alive. They've got moments as well that are sensational. That De Bruyne. Oh my god! Might gosh. be the best passer on the game. Yeah. Yeah. I've not used him yet. I've How got... many Blues have you packed? Uh, Premier League. Well, how many Ollie Watkins and Allisons have I packed? Is that Individuals. Like um, I've packed Ollie Watkins, Allison, Phil Foden, Gabriel, Ben White, Saliba, and I think that, oh, McAllister. It's a good item as well. I think that's where we're at, mate. So none of the big, big ones yet? No, Foden. not yet. But you know what the thing is with Team of the Season and Premier League Team of the Season? It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> And I am well in on this marathon, mate, because I am going home straight to open <laughs> them packs, mate. And, you know, the SPCs we've had? Sensational. Julian Alvarez. Ella Rania, the man who's won everything in football. Oh, my God. He's beautiful, mate. He's so good. Did you complete any Arsenal ones? Uh, nope, I didn't. I got Chloe Kelly as well. Yeah. She's sensational. Still ducking me for a game of FC, which I called her out on Instagram for. And she replied saying I was boring. <laughs> interesting she's still running um but realistically speaking team of the season is the best and they've got triple play styles oh my gosh these items are so good i think the thing that i've, I've really enjoyed looking at and i can't wait to get my hands on even the so-called so lower tier team of the season items like um mcallister 92 rated Class. ben white i think 91 rated yeah they all look incredible like they all look really good um so even if you are packing like not a Haaland or a Saka or a, a Son, you're still getting really good value for money. You are, yeah. It's honestly it's sensational, and there's so many, so many opportunities to get them. And I think the big thing about Team of the Season, we touched on it in the last thing, red picks in champs are back. They're so important because you're guaranteed if you get over. I don't know if you'll get over the win threshold, Buckley, but whoa, I managed whoa. it. Uh, my red picks were were interesting. I got well, I got Allison again, but then I got Saliba, and I was really happy with Saliba. Current time right now, I'm yet to play champs, but I'm going to go home right now. Well, I've been in Paris. Some of us have jobs. Should not take your PlayStation with you. No. There's PlayStations I've got to be switched on. everywhere. I've got to be switched on. Hand luggage only. There's PlayStations all over the arena. What are you I talking did, about? I did contemplate booting up in Charles de Gaulle when they've got the uh, <laughs> PlayStation 5s there and played a few. But um, the play styles that, obviously now you're getting triple play styles, one play style could completely change an item's future. Without like, question. Say 
he's not come out yet. I imagine Harry Kane gets a team of the season. If he gets Ariel Plus as a playstyle, he instantly becomes meta. If Jude Bellingham gets a few alternate positions, instantly becomes a completely different player. And that's what I love about team of the season, that they just change the power curve completely. I think it's I think it's the best time to, to play FC team of the season. Like now, it's just so exciting. The hype is is fully there. Everyone's tweeting me their their, their packs. And I'll do it tonight. Their red picks and how many wins are you going for there? Because you've got to play twenty games. It's good that obviously it's nice that the weekend league's extended, which is yeah. really nice. Gives you a few extra days. I like to take it. You know, I was not on three on Friday. <laughs> um, I can't believe you admitted that on the podcast. But I finished eleven and three though, so we take those. You always finish eleven. 11 and that is done 11 and done for me because I've seen some of my friends get the best rewards from 11 wins but Buckley you're going to get 16 tonight aren't you I'd like rank 3 or rank 2 16 to 18 wins do you think you're going to get that it's hard you know I can have you qualified no, so it's 25 games I need to play. Right, well, we better wrap it up then because... I've got, I've got places to be and games <laughs> to play. I've got places to be and games <laughs> to play. And yeah, you'll have to let us know you're getting your reds, mate. I will. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. But thank you, as always, for joining us. And do leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the episode and do share your thoughts on everything we've discussed today. And don't forget fcpro.com to get your tickets to join us at the E! Champions League. If you'd like to meet FG and Richard Buckley, that's your opportunity. I've been Frankie Ward, he's been FG, and he has been Richard Buckley. Thank you so much. Good night.